Hello people, welcome back here to the channel Stapa Bolha Azul and Super Academico and let's keep with our reading of the movie, the, the book Don Casbur by Marshall de Assis Without fail, when I arrived home it was night I walked fast, not so fast however that I did not have time to ponder the terms in which I would speak to the dependents. I formulated the request in my head, choose the words I would use and the tone in which I would say them, something between dry and kindly. In the garden before going into the house, I repeated them to myself and then aloud to see if they were adequate and if they complied with Capito's instructions. I must speak to you tomorrow without fail. Choose the place and let me know later. I uttered them slowly and still more slowly the words without fail, as if to underscore them. I repeated them again and found them too curt, almost brusque and really impertinent from a boy to an older man. I considered choosing others and I paused. Finally, I told myself that the words would serve. The important thing was to say then in a tone that would not offend. And the proof is that when I repeated them once more, they came out almost supplicants. Supplicating. It was only necessary not to bear down too much, nor be too gentle, a middle term. And Capitu is right, I thought. The house is mine, he is only a dependent, but clever. He can work very well for me and upset Mama's plan. plans. Have no talent for it. I have no licking for the life of a padre. I'm ready to do anything that she wants. Mama knows that I'd do anything she told me. I'm willing to be whatever she likes, even a driver of an omnibus. Padre, padre, no. I cannot be a padre. The career is fine, but not for me. This whole speech did not pour out of me thus. Altogether in a natural flow and perpetuary, as it may appear, on the, printed, on the printed page, but in pieces, mumbled, in a voice that was faint and timid. Notwithstanding, José Dias heard it, I guess. He certainly had not reckoned with my resistance, however feeble it might be, but what dismayed him still more was this conclusion. I count on you, senhor, to serve me, to save me, to save me. The eyes of our dependent flew open, his eyebrows arched, and the pleasure that I had counted on giving him with my choice of a protector did not manifest itself in a single muscle. His whole face was inadequate to his stupefaction. No doubt the matter of my speech had revealed a new soul to him. I did not recognize myself, but it was the final words that bore a unique vigor. Vigor. Jose Diaz was stunned. When his eyes returned to their ordinary dimensions, but what can I do? he asked. A lot. You know that at our house everyone values your opinion. Mama often asks your advice 
your device doesn't she uncle Cosme says that you are a person of talents kindness he retorted flat of it favors from worthy persons who deserve everything that's there you are no one will ever hear me say the slightest 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 thing against such persons why because they are noble and virtuous your mother is a saint your uncle a most perfect gentleman i have known distinguished families none could compare with yours in nobility of sentiments the talents that your uncle finds in me i confess i have it but it is only one it is the talent of recognizing what is good and worth of admiration and esteem surely you also have the talent of protecting your friends such as me how can i help you angel of heaven i can't dissuade your mother from a project which has been aside from a promise her ambition and dream for many years <laughs> even if i could have once it's too late just yesterday yesterday she did me she did me the honor of saying to me Jose Dias, I must put Bentinho in the seminary. Timidity is not such vile coin as it is represented. If I had been without fear, it is likely that with the indignation I felt, I would have burst out and called him a liar, but then it would have be necessary to admit that I had been eavesdropping, eavesdropping, and one action would have offset the other. I contented myself with replying that it was not too late. It is not too late. There is still time if you want. If I want. What else do you want, do I want, but to serve you? What do I desire, expect, that you you be happy as you deserve? Well then, there is still time. Look, it's not because of laziness I am ready to do anything. If she would like me to study law, I'll go to São Paulo. The law is beautiful. Over the face of José Dias passed nothing which resembled the reflection of an idea, an idea which cheered him extraordinarily. He was silent for a few moments. I had my eyes on him. He had turned his toward the harbor and i uh, and i uh, and as and as i persisted well this is the end of this reading with many gaps i'm sorry i didn't know that was so many gaps in this reading for you that don't know this story, Bentinho goes to the seminary with a plan made by José Dias and him of being uh, of being put aside of the seminary because he was not uh, able. He, he he didn't have the vocation. Uh, the the calling you have the calling to do to be a padre in the seminary he meets a uh, friend uh, named Stephen and they both 
plan to study law instead of being the seminary then they flee the seminary in a normal way and finally Bentinho marries Capitu but with the friendship w with Stephen, Stephen always in his house he begins to suspicious that he and Capitu are having an affair and he confronts Capitu, Capitu doesn't deny but get offended and so he uh, leaves her with uh, a boy that he is suspicious to be Stephen's son. So this is basically the rest of the story, the details unfortunately for another time. I recommend this reading, complete reading of this work because Machado de Assis is a genius of Brazilian literature for sure. Till next time, bye bye. Don't forget to subscribe to the channels. <laughs> bye bye.